from Ball to Lillis, section two, against the odds, 1972 to 1976. League Division 3, 1972-73, finishing 20th. League Cup first round, FA Cup second round. Without a manager to drop the club's summer list of retained players, but with the knowledgeable George Mulhall around to assist them, the directors retained all but one of the professionals who had featured in the 1971-72 season. Missing was Bob Wallace, who, having asked for a transfer, moved to Chester for £4,000. Mulhall seemed an obvious choice as the next manager, and on the 28th of June, the board put their faith in him. This was Mulhall's first managerial post. He immediately went to Hartlepool to bring former Newcastle halfback Ken Hale to the Shea. Hale originally came as coach, but such was the side's plight later in the season that he re-registered as a player to help town out of their crisis. Mulhall's only other significant signing in the close season was that of Johnny Quinn from Rotherham United. Town travelled to Scotland for a short tour before the new season kicked off. The supporters were heartened not only by victories over Arbroath and Cowden Beef, but also because Frank Bogan was now fit and raring to go. Town's league programme opened with a single goal victory at Brentford, Terry Shanahan netting a late winner. And after the first four games, two wins and two draws saw Town top of Division 3. Defeat by 4th Division Berry in the League Cup was disappointing, that was hardly the end of the world, and after two successive defeats by Bournemouth and Chesterfield, Town returned to the top briefly after a 3-0 win at Scunthorpe. Things started to go wrong. <laughs> then things started to go wrong. By the end of September, the side had slipped into mid-table, and by the end of the following month had dropped as low as 18th. Confidence was being drained away, and November saw things slip from bad to worse, both on and off the field. A friendly at Blythe, no doubt intended to help boost morale, had an adverse effect. Town lost 4-2. Then on the 16th of November, both Chairman Arthur Smith and Director Arthur Mitchell failed to be re-elected to the board. Smith had been criticised over financial matters and offered no satisfactory explanation as to why the accounts for the 1970-71 had been prepared so late. Nor when last seasons would be ready. Vice Chairman Percy Alban took over the running of the club and Harry Taylor returned to the board to fill Alban's former position. A recurrence of a knee injury would keep Alex Smith out of the side until February, so reserve keeper Barry White, having been at the club since November 1970, was called up for his first prolonged spell. His first game was at Barnsley in the first round of the FA Cup and did his utmost to earn town their replay, which they won. But as the teams prepared for their second round game at Scunthorpe three, we three weeks later, the club rocked supporters by selling Bill Atkins to Rochdale. The time of his transfer, the deal was actually completed on the morning of the Scunthorpe match, was questionable and did not help the team as they slipped to a 2-3 defeat at the old showground. Mulhall had claimed that Atkins did not fit into his plans, but the fans felt they had a right to know just what those plans were. A week after the cup defeat, Mulhall exchanged Lammy Robertson for Brighton's former Northern Ireland international Willie Irving, plus £23,000. Doubtless Irving would have made his debut at York on the 16th of November had the town boss not successfully called the match off on account of five or six of his players going down with flu. But Irving did appear in the side. His contribution was minimal as town's miserable run of games without a win extended to 14. By the turn of the year, Halifax were in the relegation zone. Looking for fresh impetus, Town signed Ken Hale on as a player and he made his debut in Town's first home win in the league since August, 1-0 over bottom club Scunthorpe, their cup conquerors. But it was a flash in the pan. Despite adding to the side John Wilkie, a 1,000 sign-in from Highland League side Roche County, Town's fortunes hardly improved. Mulhall actually saw fit to transfer list Dave Verity, Terry Shanahan, Frank Bogan and Keith Brearley. The last named actually went on loan to Yeovil Town, and in February Mulhall suspended young Alan Waddle for a breach of club discipline. But a further run of six games without a win meant the situation was becoming desperate, with Town now lying next to bottom. A promising run in March, four unbeaten games including three wins, hinted at a revival. But at the beginning of April, Mulhall admitted that avoiding relegation looked a forlorn hope. Not that Town waved the white flag. Shanahan put himself back in favour with a hat-trick as Town defeated Brentford 3-2, though he might have wished there had been a bigger crowd to see him do it. 
The attendance of 970 was at that point the lowest ever first team attendance in sheer history. With four games left, however, Town were five points adrift from safety. There were only two points for a win in those days, remember, and Town looked out for the count. They could not afford any more slip-ups, so were fortunate that their first three of their remaining fixtures were at home. Still, it was remarkable that they should first beat Charlton, then Southend, then, in their last home game of the season, Bournemouth. Those six points set Halifax up for a final showdown at Fellows Park, home of Walsall. It was all or nothing. Only victory would enable Town to avoid the drop and send Rotherham down instead. Town had to make do without Trevor Womble. He had played in ten games on loan from Rotherham, but under the circumstances was recalled by the Millers. In one of the most dramatic evenings in Halifax Town's history, Alan Waddell's headed goal proved enough. Town moved out of the bottom four and relegated Rotherham on the slimmest of margins. Goal average. It had been the mother and father of all great escapes. Immediately, Mulhall looked to the new season by promoting Quinn to assistant coach and then announced a retained list of 12 other players. Release were Brogan and Brearley, together with reserves Barry Holmes. He had actually been at the Shea since 1966. Jim McKernan and Michael Swain. The did you know fact, in 1971 versus Berry, Town were refused permission to play a tape of a cup final crowd. It was feared Town would turn up the volume when they had the ball. <laughs>